Greetings and welcome to another LGR thing. And this is another upgrade video for the LGR Woodgrain 486. And last time, as far as sound upgrades go, we swapped out the Creative Labs A32 sound card for another Creative Labs, a Sound Blaster Pro 2.0. Because while I do like the A32 and what it can do and all that stuff, it ended up having some problems that needed to be fixed and there were a few games that didn't quite work correctly with it, at least how I remember it and like it sounding. So I put in the 2.0, which is a great card. It's overall got fantastic support for just the games that I wanted to run from around 93 and 94 and whatnot. However, it could use with a bit of an upgrade, especially since I'm into uh, general MIDI stuff these days. A lot of different devices like the Roland Sound Canvas, the MT32, and some other things which we're gonna be diving into. But as you can see here on the back of the card, um, or the back of the computer where the card is. So the Sound Blaster is all the way down here in the bottom. And while it does have that 15 pin joystick port that acts as a MIDI output on later sound cards from Creative Labs and many other companies, this one in particular does not have the MPU 401 compatibility. And even then if it did, it wouldn't support intelligent mode. It would only be UART. I'm going to go with this right here. This is a Roland MIF IPC card from the mid 80s. And this right here is just going to plug in alongside the sound card there and supply an output right here, which is, uh, this is going to give us all of the uh, information that an actual MPU 401 unit will need. And in case you're not aware, this is an MPU 401 MIDI processing unit, which is what the MPU stands for. So they had a whole line of MPU units for musicians and computer users and all sorts of things back in the day. This is uh, another one from the 80s. I believe this one is maybe from 1986. I'm not entirely sure, 87 maybe, but uh, yeah. So this is the MPU 401. So the card will go into the computer that'll plug into this. And then these outputs here will go to a actual MIDI device. Which ones am I going to choose? That's the question. And um, I can't decide. So we're just gonna do a ton of them. Well, maybe not a literal ton, but at least four. Starting with the Roland MT32, the classic released in 1987. This is a Revision Zero model, which I actually have covered before. I did a review on it a while back, sort of a retrospective, and it's great. It's very, very appropriate for late 80s, early 90s games, really early 90s, up to a certain point anyway. Uh, it doesn't do general MIDI, but it does MT32 sound quite wonderfully, because that's what it is. But yeah, revision zero means uh, it has these left and right outputs. It doesn't have a dedicated stereo output. And it also has a bit of a problem with buffer overflow in some games. But yeah, that's what we're gonna put on the very first layer of our uh, MIDI mountain. Next up being the Roland Sound Canvas. This is in particular the SC55 Mark II, released in 1993. I have also reviewed this unit and it is fantastic. It not only has full general MIDI support where the MT32 did not, and that in case you're not aware, just actually signifies that the MT32 kind of has its own way of reproducing sounds like its own instruments in its own specific places. Whereas general MIDI standardized that so that any general MIDI device is pretty much gonna have the same instruments in the same places. And it also has Roland GS support, which is an expansion or an extension really to general MIDI which means it has a whole bunch of really cool sounds on top of that. So you can play some sound canvas games that sound fantastic. Um, it also has uh, just these little switches right here and a serial connection, but I'm not gonna be doing that. We're just gonna go with the regular MIDI here and then plug that in to the MPU 401. Next layer of the sandwich is going to be this, the Yamaha MU80 Tone Generator. I haven't actually done a video on this yet, but I probably will in the future because it is really, really cool. It is uh, released in 1994, and it not only includes the general MIDI support, uh, same as this one, although it's gonna sound different than this one, but it also has the Yamaha XG extensions, which is a bit like Roland's GS extensions. All these companies were trying to do their individual MIDI things back in the day while still adhering to the general MIDI standard. It's quite interesting, and uh, yeah, it's 
pretty similar, in fact, to the sound canvas. Um, it has the same kind of a switch right here, the serial connection for that, but again, we're not gonna be using it. We're just gonna be using the MIDI output going to an MPU-401, which gets us that maximum compatibility and all that. You could use the serial with a program like Soft MPU once again, that magical program, but I don't wanna be using any software layers if I can help it with this. I just wanna do all hardware. And the final piece of the MIDI Mountain is the Korg NS5R, which is released in 1996. It has this nifty little wheel here. And you might be familiar with the sounds of this thing if you've ever used like a Korg N1 or many of the other N series devices from Korg back in the day, uh, the mid to late 90s. And it is something that a lot of people don't really talk about, I've noticed as far as gaming goes, but it sounds really, really cool. Yeah, so it has that serial connector as well, but it, it doesn't need it. It also supports different option boards, which this one does not have installed, but that supports other different sound, um, like daughter boards that Korg had at the time. We're just gonna be using the regular NS5R capabilities here and uh, plugging that in and seeing what it does how am I gonna connect this all together, you might ask? Well, we're going to be using <laughs> the Roland MPU-104. Man, I'm saying MPU a lot. This in particular is another one of their MPU series of things. I think this was released in 1984, 1985, something like that, whenever they started doing the MPU line of stuff. And this is really just a MIDI input selector. So you can plug up to five MIDI devices into this one thing and then switch between them right here and uh, yeah, they all plug in to the back there so that the MPU-401 is going to be going in right here to the MIDI through, and then the inputs are gonna be going right here to these four in succession. So you can switch between them on the fly. And you know, I don't need this, but I found it for a good price at a music shop. So I'm like, yeah, you know what? Let's try it out, because the thing looks, looks cool. And it just, it fits right in with all of these other sound modules, these little half rack things. So. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, it makes me happy. I kind of wish the MT32 was the same, but at that point they hadn't really standardized the sizing for these little uh, synth modules. So as far as what this is going to be connected to though, well, that's something else. This right here is a Technics stereographic equalizer that I found while thrifting. This is the SH8044 model, and this is completely unnecessary, but I like it. While these do have graphic equalizers on some of them and, you know, a, a form of spectrum analyzer on the front of the displays on some of them, they don't all. And plus, I just think this one looks really cool and has a nice blue display here, like a VFD, which is just glows and looks great. Um, but this isn't actually like a receiver switcher AV kind of thing. It only takes one line in and one line out, as well as an area for a tape recording out and playback. We won't be using those. Just gonna be using the line in and out. Obviously there's four devices here and there's only one line in and out. So we're going to be using something else to get that all connected into here. And that's just gonna be this little cheapo four port audio switch. It's got video as well, but who cares? So you can switch between four different audio devices and uh, that's fine. So really all I need is these four right here. And this is going to go to this and then this, once all of these are connected uh, into here, connected to is Roland MA8 Stereo Micro Monitor Speakers. These are Roland speakers specifically made for computers and, or, you know, I guess other applications, but computers especially since they have the magnetic shielding not to mess with your monitors or other magnetic media. They are really not the most advanced Roland speakers. Um, or even the most advanced ones of theirs that I have, but I think they're cool looking because they're black and they also have, um, uh, you know, a couple of extra types of inputs in the back, which will be useful, although I really only need the one. So yeah, that's what these are going to uh, be doing. I actually found these at a thrift store as well, so they'll probably be showing up in a future episode of LGR Thrifts. But yeah, Roland MA8s, quite a lucky find, I thought. And then last but not least, we do have a variety of cables here. We got MIDI cables of all types, um, and a bunch of audio cables for the different types of connections. You know, some of them have like the RCA connector on the end. Some of them have like a quarter inch Fano connector, like dual mono that go to one stereo for the back of this, or, you know, whatever. It's just all the cables we need. They're all here. So uh, let's just get to it because there's a lot to do. And I think this is gonna be really cool once it's all together.
Well, first the easy part, which is just getting the thing installed in the computer itself. Just get the case off here, unscrew the little thingy in the back so we have a spot for it, and then finagle it through all the wiring and all these ridiculous IDE cables. And there you go. There's not really much more to do with this. There's no drivers or anything. You just plug it into the port that it provides in the back. One side goes to the interface and the other, of course, goes to the MPU 401 box. Since we're going from big to small, next up is that delightful graphic equalizer. And we're going to be using one of these cables here to go from the line in to the rear of the computer itself to the line out. The equalizer pretty much be the last step in all this before it gets to the speakers. And we got another cable going from the line out of the equalizer, and this will, of course, go to said speakers once it's all said and done. Got another cable here, a three and a half millimeter, once again, going to the line in of the sound card. And this will be going to the line out of this little switch box, which is going to make sure that all of these MIDI devices go into the line in of the sound card. Speaking of the marvelous MIDI madness, we're getting to the first one here. It's the Roland MT32. This just requires one of these patch cables, which is a couple of mono quarter inch connections that go to RCA. And every single one of these are going to be plugging into this poor little box. And since it's a Roland, I decided to use one of my fancy schmancy Roland cables. Any MIDI cable will do. But either way, it just has to be plugged into the MIDI input. Next up is the sound canvas, the SC55 Mark II in MIDI mode. We're going to be hooking the output right here through just regular RCA cables and right on over to our delightful little switch box. Seeing as it's another Roland device, we're going for another Roland MIDI cable here to the MIDI input. And yeah, these cords are already getting kind of cumbersome. I wish I had shorter cabling, but I don't. I'm just using whatever I had on hand. Next up is the Yamaha MU80, and it's really the same kind of deal. We're using these patch cables going from that to the switch box, and then we have another MIDI cable. This is just a more generic one. Don't have a fancy Yamaha one or anything. Just going into the MIDI input. Might be curious about the MIDI outputs. We're really just not sending anything from these devices to the computer or to the MPU 401 because we're not composing or doing any weird stuff like that. So we don't need to worry with anything but the MIDI ins on these devices. Our last MIDI unit here is the Korg NS5R. Fitting that it's right beside the Yamaha here because they actually worked with Yamaha back then. You could put a Yamaha daughter board inside of here and it had a bunch of sounds that were kind of similar actually to the MU80, but you'll hear it in a moment. Same cables though, just connecting to all the stuff that we've been connecting to all along the way. And there we go, that is one mangled mess of wiring. Good grief. This poor box, it's so lightweight that the cables, the weight of them is actually making it shift. It doesn't actually sit level anymore. Anyway, time to plug in all those MIDI cables into something, the MPU 104 here. And yeah, we're just going one, two, three, and four and have them all connected right into that. And then we're having another MIDI cable going from the MIDI through to the MIDI out from the MPU 401, which sends the signals from the games and whatnot to everything else. Ta-da, I've made a mess. It's a beautiful mess, but a mess nonetheless. So let's tidy this up a bit and get all these things and well, <laughs> by tidying up, I, I mean just shoving it all behind there so you can't see it as clearly. Let's go ahead and get these speakers over here, these Roland MA8s. We just have a nice little RCA connection here in the back, a little cable to go in between them, which is just your standard thing. And there we go. They, they can sort of fit in here like that because I only have so much room on my table and this is how it's gonna work. And yeah, I, I haven't even started with the power cables and AC adapters yet. <laughs> There's a lot of them. Uh, here's just the ones for the MIDI devices. Good grief. Let's get started because I'm ready to test this stuff out. No problem at all. A time lapse will fix this. Time to hit the switch on the power box everything is plugged into and see if they all come on. And yes, they do. And it's a lovely sight. Look at all the lights and displays and oh man, this is awesome. Except it doesn't work. There's, uh, there's no audio coming out of the speakers, and that, <laughs> that could be any number of things. I don't know why. I, I don't know what's going on. Um, after about a half an hour of screwing around with different things, I figured out that the Sound Blaster Pro 2.0 card's line in was muted. I guess because when I put the compact flash card in here a while back, I didn't actually reinstall the Sound Blaster software and it needed that in order to adjust all the volumes and activate it. I don't know what was going on, man. But anyway, installing the software and putting the line in up to 11 did the job. So here we go. Let's try it out with some Duke 3D. Now, 
you'll notice there, if you know what you're listening to, that those didn't quite sound right. None of them did, and that's because of the way that I was switching between them on the fly. What you need to do when you're actually going to use this would be to make sure it's on the right setting for one thing and the sound setup, and then make sure it's switched over before you start playing whatever it is you're going to be playing, because otherwise it's just going to use some sound patches and things that are not right and it sounds like garbage. This is more like what it's supposed to sound like here. <laughs> This is awesome. Just being able to switch in between whichever device I want, as long as the game is set to use it correctly, that is fantastic. It's just, this is a cool little setup. Well, kind of a big setup, but I like it a lot. Anyway, it's great for games, but let's just hear some demonstration in the form of the classic canyon.mid file from Windows. I recorded each one of these separately and then edited them together so you can hear them going back to back with each device. Enjoy. love this setup. Just look at this thing. It's a monstrous midi mountain. Ah, uh, I enjoy it. Even though it's completely impractical. I know it's absurd and it is absolutely not my recommended way of doing much of anything, really. This is mostly just for me to have fun with because that's what my wood grain 46 is for, just to have fun with and show it off in some videos and relive some childhood fantasies. You know, I wondered about a lot of this equipment, just looking at it in music stores and catalogs and game setup menus back in the day. And now I finally have the chance to explore it. And I know some of it's not ideal and some of it is just also really, really good. And I'm surprised with certain things. And there's all sorts of other ways to set up a sort of MIDI control configuration like this. Of course, you could just use a daisy chaining method or MIDI through outputs and inputs and whatnot that are all over these things. Yeah, you could do that too. And then you're dealing with latency and not having a cool switch box. But this is just one way of doing things. And I hope that you enjoyed seeing me screw around with it and let me know what you thought. And perhaps even tune in to some future videos that are going to be on some future topics in the future. There are new ones every Monday and Friday here on LGR. And as always, thank you very much for watching.